guys, welcome back to the Capital View Farm and Zoo. So today's episode we are following on the theme because last episode we did this pretty cool little red crane habitat with a couple of different kind of like native species and stuff. Um, we're following on with this exact same theme. Um, since the last episode I have just added a couple of bits off camera. So this is just going to be like a little natural kind of pond as such in the park. Um, it's got some mute swans in here, obviously I had to put a little food dish down for them just to make sure they've got it, it's accessible. Um, so that's obviously there to keep them fed. Um, the keeper will just kind of come in. Um, I could probably do with putting something here so they don't stand here, but obviously for <laughs> Planet Zoo reasons I've got to have some form of access. So today what I'm doing is I'm actually finishing off this area here. Um, I've already marked out the pools. Um, so this side is going to be capybaras. And then this side, I'm either going to put the saltwater crocodile or the American alligator. I'm not 100% sure on this one yet, so um, I'm hoping we can get both of them done in this episode. If it runs on a little bit too long, um, I'll do the same as last time. I will just kind of split it into two. Um, but yeah, we're going to focus on the capybaras this episode. So what I wanted, and I thought it would be a pretty cool idea, is to have some kind of like elevated kind of platform which goes to here and then kind of splits off and goes around so it's almost like um, you're always constantly looking at the enclosure as such and um, I have just realized as well I've come down a little bit too far on this side because what I want to put here is just kind of like their shelter area so let's get that path in and then I can see where I'm going from there so I want it to be roughly six I think and I'm gonna probably make it about that height. Uh, I am just going to pop on angle snap just so I kind of know where I'm going and I can keep the movement nice and smooth. Um, so I'm thinking something just kind of like that and then my idea was is to use a couple of these walls. So these again these are the same, well I'll say the same pack. It's a similar pack to the ones I used last time so these are the Caesar Creates ones. So I'm going to use these because I think this one here would go quite nicely underneath here. So I'm thinking if I just kind of follow this all the way round, um, I think it could look pretty cool. I might actually mix it up because otherwise it's just going to look the same I think all the way round. So I think if I just do three and then fill it in with other bits of rock piece as well, because we've got quite a lot of um, quite a lot of selection here, so I can use a couple of different bits. Um, these ones have got quite a nice curve on them as well, so I could potentially sink a couple of them down. Um, I know that big one at the top is going to cause us some problems, but what I will do is, is I will just select all the rocks on the top of this bit. Because obviously they're kind of backwards and forwards and upside down pieces. Um, it's not letting me select. I think that's all of them. Oh, just a few more. At least we've got the majority. So let me just try and select as many of these as I can. Might take a couple of tries to actually get all of them. You've got to click them in certain orders to actually get them because it's a bit awkward. Let's just try that. Get rid of them ones. And for some reason I can't actually grab them so I will just sink it down like that and then what I can do is I can just duplicate that now that we've kind of edited it how, how we need it um, and I can just pop a couple of these in here as well just like that and um, what I will do as well is I will just kind of pad it out with some little bits as well along the bottom just to make it look a little bit not as uh, not as kind of janky as it did it did look so um, I can just pop a couple of these in just like that I think um, just to kind of fill the gaps as well and then of course obviously we're going to be using these rocks as well because we want it to kind of follow on as best as we can get it so I'm thinking as well um, I've used it a couple of times before but I think I'm going to do a hot spring for the capybaras um, I'm not sure if anyone has actually used them before, but um, they're quite easy to set up to be fair. Um, I think I learned how to do it from plastic swans, so what I will 
do is I will link the video up here. I'll just cross check that because um, I can't quite remember who it was who I learnt it from. But um, yeah, I'll double check and I'll add the, the video if it was Plastic Sponsor or whoever it was. I'll just link it up in the top here so you can go and learn as well. Um, but I will give you just a kind of brief overview of what, what you need to do. Um, so I'm thinking potentially if you stood here, I think I would like the hot springs to kind of be along this bit here. So I think the best way to do this would be to kind of have a rock with a little bit of an overhang. So I think if we just do a couple of these kind of rocks, obviously we'll mix it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to stick with these kind of ones because I quite like the look of these ones. And then if I just make some kind of formation, um, could go with something like that. And I guess that could also act as like a little bit of shelter or something. Uh, I could use that one potentially. Just kind of section it off a little bit I think if I kind of sink it in. Actually, now let's spin that one around a little bit more. And then just kind of make it fit like that. Um, what I could do here is just kind of fill this area with bushes or something, just so we're not having to um, use loads and loads of scenery pieces. Um, so I could just kind of sink this down to potentially that kind of height, just like that, I think. And then obviously you can kind of get a good view from here and then you also get a really good view from here as well. Um, obviously this bit here would need to be kind of flat so I could use, I'll probably use my own ones actually just to be on the safe side. Um, but we'll probably end up using like that kind of rock on the top of that. So I could potentially just do that now actually to be fair. Um, let me just place that so I can just take it out of the group. Okay, and then that's just obviously on its own now. So yeah, what I can do is I can just kind of lay down the base for where I'm thinking I'm going to have the, the hot spring. So it's pretty much just going to be like layer in, similar to what we did last time. Um, I will utilize that one. So I just need it in as smooth as possible just so they can actually reach it and um, so let's just kind of go with that kind of theme I think and um, I am just gonna test the water as well and um, just gonna pop the water in now just to see what it looks like so that goes I'd say it's probably deep enough and um, but I do just want to add a little bit more depth around the middle I think. So I'm just going to kind of shrink this bit down just slightly. Um, I will smoothen all these out just so it's not, not as rough around the edge. And then let me just see how far we can go with the water. So that takes it up to up to there. And obviously we've got a little bit of depth in the middle for them to kind of swim around as well. Um, obviously with them being like um, grassland animals we're gonna kind of stick with this kind of theme and we've done. Um, I might also add some mossy rocks as well just around this because obviously I'd imagine over time there's going to be a little bit of moss and stuff um, just kind of grow in so we'll kind of pop it in to these places here I think just like that just kind of join a few bits together and um, I'll add some moss around the edge at the back. Obviously this is where the, the water is going to kind of drip out and stuff. Um, and then just where we've got kind of like little ridges and stuff, um, I will just add a little bit of moss. And then just where we've got any sharp edges as well. And then also as well, probably at the back here, I can probably cover all of this bush here as well to be fair. It just adds a little bit of dimension as well. So something along them lines, I think. Um, I think here what I am going to do is just kind of have a 
potentially... Let's just have a look through the barriers, because I don't know if I'm going to use in-game or if I'm going to use kind of like a, a natural barrier or something. Um, well, let's just have a have a quick look and just kind of see how some little bits work. If I just pop that in, because I've never used this one before, so I just wanted to see what it looks like. I'm going to move a couple of these as well, just to see. Make sure, yeah, random rotations on, that's fine. Move that one back a touch. Mm, okay, yeah, I think that can work, to be quite honest. And then along here, I am going to use, I think I'm going to do like rocks and like a glass barrier. Um, just from from this bit downwards. I think that would look pretty cool. So I think that's what I'm going to do just to kind of join it up. Um, whilst I'm here as well, I am just going to add the end of the path if I can actually get it to go how I want it. is one and otherwise it's just going to be a little bit awkward I think it's not wanting to connect onto that bit but I'm not quite sure why um, that might be the straightest we can get it I guess that's not too bad I can possibly cover <laughs> cover that bit up and just kind of go from there So as well, just before I go into this as well, I have extended these things that we used over in the Log Gibbon habitat, um, because I made them just for the smaller path before, but what I've done is I've just extended them out. Um, they've still got the netting underneath, but I've just added a couple um, just around this area just to tie it all in. Obviously this area is far from done, so I've added one at the entrance, so as soon as you go through, and then obviously you've got the little swan, swan pond. And then I've also made this little, because I know I said about how I wanted this to be like a little nature reserve. So I've made like a little bird hide, which is kind of elevated. Um, I've just put some reeds in front and obviously you've got all the different types of birds and stuff. Um, I am going to have a look through the packs again, because I think there's quite a lot of potential for different kind of birds. So um, yeah, let's hop straight back into the capybara build. Okay, so I think at the minute, obviously it's going to be a, a bit of a work in progress, it says. Um, I am going to add a lot of these rocks just to carry the theme on. Um, I'm going to try and mix it up on which ones we use and how high we use them and stuff. Um, obviously I want them to use these areas as well. I don't want there to be too much um, too much rockery in this one because we need quite a lot of um, greenery. So obviously they'll probably spend most of the time in here. But then obviously here we're going to have like staff entrance straight into the back of the building. Um, it, it's not going to be viewable from kind of here, so I think I'm actually going to end the path kind of there and then potentially fill this area with trees or something or just like a, a maintenance bay or something, I don't know. But I just need something along here to stop them kind of using this path to look in. And then I also think on this side as well, I might use that same barrier just to curve it off, but then I want to see... Let's just see what it looks like, because I don't want it to look too too weird as such. Um, just give that a go. If I just add a very tiny one. Right, okay. 
Let's see what that looks like from a distance. Uh, I don't think it looks too bad to be fair. Um, I think we should, should be okay with that. Um, what I will do as well is I will just join the back of this up with a null barrier just for the time being. Because um, obviously it's gonna, we don't really need anything there to be quite honest because we've got the, the rocks and stuff, there's gonna be no way they can escape over there. Um, I guess what I could also do as well is I could put some vines and stuff on here just to make it blend in. That's on, on both sides as well. Um, I think at the minute I'm quite happy with this kind of, I don't know how you say it actually, is it? Yeah, I've never heard, I've seen it but I didn't know that's what it was called. Um, yeah, I think this area here, I think it will pull together quite nicely. Um, what I need to do as well is I'm just going to pop in, just do that again because it was on um, thingy, so I'm gonna, just going to do a couple of these bits, just like that I think, and then I'm going to make it to about there. On this side, what I'll do is I will just flip it and just gonna go from there, I think. And then, what I can do with this as well is I can just start adding the glass pieces in. So, I'm gonna try my hardest to actually hide them within the rocks because I want it to feel quite aquatic. So, I'm thinking if I um, I go to sorry, off then. I go to about there I think. Um, obviously what I can do is I can just select them all and lower it down. So we're kind of at like that angle I think. And then maybe what I could do is just kind of use that piece. And then I think that works quite nicely actually to be fair. And then what I will do is I will run a null barrier all the way under here and then just kind of loop it round. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to focus on filling in what the capybaras need. So let's just pull up the Zoopedia page. So these guys are pretty cool. They don't, <laughs> they don't need too much. Um, I think I'm going to have four. So we should have plenty of space. Um, you can have quite a few in an enclosure. You can have bachelor groups. We're not going to do that. We're going to have probably one, one male, three females, I think. Um, you can also make these as a walkthrough enclosure. They've also got the guest interaction, but we're not going to do that. Um, we've done quite a lot of them on the channel before. We've done obviously the goats, the lemurs, and the sheep and the alpacas. I think they're the only walkthrough ones I've done. Uh, the, and the chicken as well, I've done the chicken so I will pop a little card up here just for the first episode of the series as such from the start because I don't know if you've kind of started from the beginning when the Barnyard Animal Pack came out or if you've joined later on I'll pop something up here so you can catch up and watch those episodes where we did all the guest interactions and stuff so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hop ahead I'm going to make just like a little outline of a shelter building which I want here and then once I've got the, the base down like I did last time, I'll come back and then we'll pick up from where we left off. Okay, so I've just popped down a little off show area. Um, there's just a couple of tweaks that I need to make. Um, just like moving these these trees out and stuff just so they're not, um, not kind of in the middle of the building. So we'll move that one out. I'll just move that one back a touch just so them leaves don't poke through. That one needs going out a little bit as well. Um, I could actually lift that one up to be fair. Just make sure the leaves are out again. So about to there. So what will happen here is obviously it's nice and kind of blocked off. Um, you can't really see it from the back. But we're going to have the staff entrance here. It'll kind of go through and then the capybaras will come out of here. And then this will be their enclosure. Um, what I was thinking for up here but I'm just trying to figure out how I can do it. Um, I was gonna kind of make this under cover, but then obviously I thought with the with the bend, I'm gonna potentially make like 
I'm going to give it my best shot, but I don't know if I'll be able to do it properly. I want to do like um, a little bit of an overhang roof, kind of coming round. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and do that. If I can't, then it won't make it to the final cut. So I'm just going to do a little section here off camera. Um, I'm just going to see how it looks to start with. And then if I like it, what I'll do is I will just copy it round. Um, but just to give me a bit of a guidance as well, I am just going to add the railings back on. Just so I've got something to, to kind of work with. Um, obviously I can't pop the railings on this bit for some reason. So I'll probably have to do like custom railings, but we'll do them towards the end. I'll probably make them quite high actually to be fair. So I'm just going to have a quick play around. I'm going to probably do a 4 meter section. Probably from, I think 4 meters is roughly about there I think. I will just test that now. Uh, yeah, that's about 4 meter section. So I'll try 4 meter section just with some wood bits. I'm going to have a play around just if I find something that I like and then I will do half and then we'll just kind of create it again just so I can show you how I did it. So just give me two seconds. Okay, so I actually managed to whip something together quite quickly which I was <laughs> surprisingly quite happy with. Um, so I think I'm going to go with this to be fair. Um, I will just do a quick run through of what, what I've used uh, just product wise. Uh, I am going to take these railings away. Um, so let's just do a quick run through. So I used the stain wood wall large window. Um, the colour I've selected, I don't know why the colour's not there, that's weird. Normally because they are um, flex, oh it's not there, sorry. Um, yeah, so because they're flexi colour I'd choose this one. Obviously pause if you want to kind of mimic that wood colour as well. So I'll also pop the little code up here just a little bit bigger in case you can't see that. Um, so I've used all the stained wood pieces, I've used a large window, uh, just the one meter piece. Um, I did pop all of these to, I popped that one to uh, two, just so I could kind of get the roof on this kind of weird angle. And then the grid height, I did change that down to zero just so I've got full control of how far up I bring stuff. Um, but what I do want here is just a little wooden kind of beam. So let's just have, it's way too big, I don't want that. Um, I just want something a little bit smaller than that, uh, a little bit thinner than that actually. Although we could... Not too big, that's going to be too big actually. That could work. That could be what I'm looking for. And I could potentially pop that about there I think. But let me just make sure that that is 100% straight. And then what I can do is I can just sink it back just like that and then I just probably need like a tiny little two meter piece now. Uh, it was something very small. Possibly this and colour it the exact same and then what I'll do is I'll use these little pieces here as guidance um, so if I sink it to potentially there and then I think what I'll do is I will just skip I think I'll do it every two just like that I think and then another two and then skip another two like that and then I think that adds quite a nice little area to be quite honest obviously it goes into the ground as well and it obviously just kind of melts into into the rocks so yeah what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna advance move them all into place to be quite honest and um, I'm gonna have to be quite careful with how I do this because obviously I need them all to sit quite nicely um, obviously I don't want to cause any like Z fighting or anything. Um, I think if I go to potentially that angle I might have to put that in a bit just so it touches up the top. And then this one we'll probably have to curve that quite harshly I think. I think as long as I keep the, the curve going quite well, um, I think it can work quite 
quite nicely. So let's just do this. Um, whilst I do this, I will just pop it into speed build just so I can kind of zoom through it, and then obviously at the end we can we can fiddle around and just see how far away we are and see if we need to make any further amendments. So let me just get all these into position. Um, I am just following this this kind of curve all the way around. Okay, so that will be the finished product. Um, obviously, I'm going to take the fencing off the back of this. Um, obviously, there's a couple of little tweaks that I want to make just going around. Um, but I think for now, I'm pretty happy with kind of where I'm at with it. Um, obviously, there's a couple of tiny, tiny little tweaks that I need to make um, just so I'm a little bit happy with it kind of pulling these these bits in like that um, and obviously these ones as well they just need pulling out ever so slightly like that and then that one probably just needs twisting a tiny little bit and pulling out again so just until we get to a position where it doesn't look too janky um, but yeah I think so I can go in and just make some very slight amendments. Um, obviously, there's there's going to be bits that are like a tiny little bit out, um, but obviously I can just kind of move bits around. Um, obviously, I want to try and mirror this on the opposite side as well. Um, but for now, we are just going to focus on what we've got here. Um, it's a shame you can't use like a mirroring tool and just mirror it all the way around. Um, but yeah, I think. I'm pretty happy with, with what I've got here. So I am going to just follow this kind of theme on. Um, I'm going to make sure I've got the angle snap on because what I want to do here is I just want to make sure this theme that's going to run all the way down is parallel to the path as well. So I'm going to go all the way down and it just sits above that as well which is nice um, so let's just get the length in first and then we'll come back and we will just change the angle so it matches so obviously what I've got to remember is as well it's on um, a little bit of a curve so I think if I just kind of overhang it just slightly um, I might actually not need to overhang it too much to be quite honest because looking at this it looks to be okay so I'm gonna use the wooden beams again so I think I'm gonna use the arctic ones uh, just because I think they might fit the best with this um, with this current build so I just need to work out I might have to go sideways with these just so they fit quite, quite nicely so if I just pop them in yeah, I do think that's going to be a little bit too big actually, to be quite honest. Yeah, let's not use that. Let's find another one. Um, potentially the twilight ones. Maybe something like that would work actually. And then if I just kind of use going to eyeball them into place. Obviously this is on a little bit of a slope so I've got to be careful with how I do this. So I'm just trying to get them as equal as I can. That one just needs to go back in ever so slightly. 
and then what we'll do is we'll just take it to the end about there. And then we'll just pop that back in. And then I am just going to move that all to there. And then what I'm going to do here, just to save myself a little bit of time, is I'm just going to move it so it covers that bit like that. So then that just covers the edge of the parts which I don't want. Uh, let me just turn climbing off for all these because we don't need it. Okay, so climbing disabled. And then, yeah, so that adds quite a nice little, little piece, I think. Uh, I am just going to lower that as well. Just so it's about that height. Um, ideally here, I think, I could do with pulling these just a little bit out. Just like that, I think. And I can do the same with this. Yeah, actually, no. I'm going to leave that where it was. Just like that. And I can just not so much hide these because I don't mind having these kind of bits all over the place. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the, the layout. So you've got quite a good amount of view in here. Um, it's quite good for if it rains as well because you can kind of sit, well, stand, sit, whichever one you want to do. Um, you can kind of look down. Obviously we've got the glass view in here. Um, I think this will possibly move to be quite honest. I think I'll probably pop that somewhere here, I think. Maybe like that. Just so it's out of the way of the the viewing area. Um, let me just make a couple of tweaks to it. About there, I think. And I'm just going to move that bin round as well. A piece of rogue eelgrass. What's going on there? Like that. And then that just leaves this area nice and free for people to sit and watch, or stand and watch if they want. Um, so yeah, let's grab the capybaras. So I'm just going to grab one male, uh, that female looks pretty decent, uh, that male looks pretty decent as well, let's just refresh, uh, we could have got that one but the longevity is not the best, so we'll go with that one, and we've got a bronze one as well. So that works for me, um, I'm going to pop all of these into the quarantine. Obviously this is sandbox mode, so it's not not required, but if you're playing franchise then it will be required. Um, so yeah, let's get the hot springs set up. So if you go down to Habitat, uh, you can either use the little species search or you can just type it in. Um, but I just tend to type it in because I find it easier. And what you're going to need is the hot water tap large. So you can kind of pop these in wherever. I tend to just kind of sink them. Um, uh, possibly put one there. Maybe pop one on the end there. And then I might pop one in here as well. Let's see how close we can get that there. And then just, yeah, in little locations as well. Um, I could potentially build a little area here as well just with some higher rocks. Um, let's do that actually just so I've got some more, a bit more of a blueprint to actually do some more hot springs for them. So let's just get all this area to take that rock all the way up to the edge there actually. Just make sure random rotation is on. Because I've used the temperate rocks, uh, I am just going to grab a couple more temperate rocks in here. So you can just type it in. Um, I'm going to want to use some of the larger ones, so potentially stuff like this, I think. And then I might use 
couple of different larger ones just to fill these kind of gaps in like that. Uh, I could, to be fair, I could stick with that and then just use these. So again, I like to sink them, you don't have to sink them into the ground, but I like to just kind of sink them. Um, I guess you could also use these as a guide as well. Um, just kind of like that. Um, and then from there, what you could also do, if you really wanted to, you could bring your rock forward, and you could make it kind of slant a bit, move it back, just like that if you want. Um, like I say, whatever you kind of want to do is pretty much a possibility in this game. So I tend to like to have just the edge kind of poking out like that and I think that gives quite a nice little view from this this angle as well because obviously the rocks stop there and the capybara can come and just kind of sit and do their, their iconic little thing there. Um, I am just going to go in with a couple of very small rocks um, just because I'm not overly happy with the, the texture it's kind of given me so far um, so I just kind of like to go in and just lay a couple of random bits and bobs just to fill them in and then it just gives that tiny little bit of extra detail as well just like that just some smaller ones and I am going to move that one slightly Potentially that angle, because then that's also another good viewpoint from up here. You can kind of see them. So yeah, I think that works quite nicely. Um, I think that'd be quite a good viewing point as well. I'm going to put flowers and stuff in here. Um, I might put some little shallow rocks along the bottom just to make it look like it's almost like a fixing. Um, I could pop a couple of these over. So um, yeah, let me just finish up these um, glass panels here, I'll pop a couple of plants in the front and then we'll hop back and we'll get the capybaras in and we'll finish decorating the enclosure. Okay, so we're now in a position to actually start adding the hot springs. So just before I do that, I'm going to follow on the same kind of style as what I've got over here on this side. So I kind of filled it with sand. I quite like this just to do along the bottom and then around the edge I like to go in with the rock bit um, so I use the rough rock around the edge um, just to give it that little bit just like variation as such I'm going to turn the intensity down because I want to just kind of blend these edges just so they don't look so harsh um, I'm going to do that very much around the edge just to fade it out a bit and it gives a little bit of long grass as well. Um, I'm gonna do that for the rock as well. Um, we will go in and just kind of keep blending it until I've got it to a point where, where I'm kind of happy. Um, and then I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit more there. Okay, so for the hot springs, so what you're gonna need is you're gonna need one of the temperature regulators. So these are found down here under utilities. So I'm going to add it to this group, like that. Obviously I'm playing in sandbox mode so I don't need the water filters or any of the other bits, but to make this work I will need the water temperature regulator. So I'm going to check the range because I don't want it to kind of overspill into the swans. So I can probably stretch it to that extent. So I'm going to do it there. So the body of water itself needs to be between 35 and 40 degrees. So we're going to increase that to 35 degrees. And then also it, from update 1.9, um, that came out quite a while ago, I think it was like April time I believe. Um, you can actually customise the, the water as such. So you can kind of add light like mist, which gives it that pretty cool effect. So if we just speed it up, the um, the mist should start coming through. So just like that, obviously I don't want it that intense. So we're going to take it down to about 
0 0.3, I think. Or maybe even 0 0.2. Let me just speed that up. Yeah, I think I prefer it at that. Um, I'm not going to add any bubbles because I don't... Not that I don't like them, I just don't really want to use them. Um, I don't really think it's kind of necessary for the capybaras. So we'll just leave it at zero. Obviously you've got all the presets here, you've got some pretty weird ones like Street Fox Coffee. I mean why not? Um, pipe Shot, do Toxic Waste if you want, Gulpy, um, Cosmic Cal, personal favourite, Toxic, pretty much the same as the um, that one, pipe shot, uh, midnight, or Amazon. The Amazon one could work quite well because capybaras live in the Amazon. So let's turn the bubbles back on. Does it look too dirty though? Uh, no, I think it's alright actually. Let's try that and we'll add a tiny. I can kind of get rid of some of that actually. Yeah, I think that works. So let's get the capybaras added and then let's just make sure that they're all happy with what we've got so far. So again, from last episode, all my, <laughs> all my facilities are hidden under the trees. Um, so here's our four capybaras. So let's get them popped into, well, it would help if I finish the enclosure. Let me just actually finish the enclosure. I'm going to null barrier it all the way around. I can just move these bits out. Um, I am going to go to here. The only reason is because that back wall, I wanted it to be just kind of a show. Um, so I want to just shorten this bit and I want it to kind of snap in to potentially there, I think. So let's move that one so it's all on the outside and then from there what I can add is the habitat gate. So I might use the metal one actually just because it goes with this building a little bit better. So hopefully that's, yep, that's all added. So I'm going to add that as a staff path just because I don't want people stood looking into the enclosure. So yeah, let's grab the capybaras and then we can go from there. So we've just got some scenery and stuff to add as well. So whilst I'm doing that, I um, kind of wanted to keep it in line with this. Obviously I know they're from South America. They're gonna, in franchise mode, require South American plants. But because we are playing in, um, in sandbox mode, we can be a little bit more flexible. So let's just speed up the, the time and just get them in so we've only got one left they should come running across now there we go so the first capybara we've got wait for him to drop his box okay so let's just check all the areas and stuff just make sure they can traverse pretty much all of it and I'm very happy with that um, obviously we can see here they can't use a couple of these enrichment items so we're gonna pull them out just so we can ensure the capybara can use them. Okay, so it's saying inaccessible. I don't know why. Let's check those ones again. So that one's accessible. Uh, yeah, so they can use these three apart from that one. We'll get rid of that one because they can't actually get up there. And I think it was this one as well, wasn't it? The end one. That's fine, we'll get rid of the end one. I can select it. Uh, there we go. Okay, Ooh, just for before I finish, I'm gonna. No, we'll do all this in pause mode because otherwise this area is gonna get quite busy. So, um,. I'm not sure about this pool actually. I'm having second thoughts about the colour of the pool. Uh, let's just select the water. I mean I can change the transparency. I just don't want it to look too dirty. Maybe if we go with that I think that could work quite nicely. 
yeah, let's go with that because it, it looks a little bit dirty from this angle, so obviously I want to keep it uh, keep it looking nice and clean. Um, so yeah, they're all in now. Hopefully, we should see some little capybara babies as well. Um, I'm not going to do the second half of this because what I am going to do is when I build the American alligator in here or saltwater crocodile, I've not quite decided yet. Um, I'm going to literally mirror these. Um, I'm going to try my best to make it look as appealing as possible. I might have to go kind of across it with potentially... Let me just show you what I mean. Um, I might have to kind of go across the top with something like that, I think. Um, just to kind of give it a little bit of character. And then I might just have to fill this end bit in or something. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Um, so yeah, so let's get decorating the uh, enclosure. So I'm going to just make myself a little palette over here. Just the stuff that we've used in this enclosure. And then I can not do that. Um, I can select that and left click, not right click. And yeah, let's grab some bracken as well, because I think the bracken works quite well. Um, I would also like to use a couple of these. So the salt warts. So I want all this area to tie in nicely. I want it all to be cohesive. Um, we're going to use the lily pads as well. I'll raise them up so I can select them easier. Um, and then I think the eelgrass. So that again, that's just going to be one that we're probably going to sink around the edge. Um, what other bits can I use? I might use a couple of these. I don't want to go too crazy. Um, I want to keep it looking semi-realistic. And I do not know why I keep doing that. I keep right clicking instead of left clicking. So yeah, I think that's my palette I'm going to work with. Um, let me just grab a couple of the smaller reeds because I know I've placed a couple of these down potentially in the nature reserve actually. Uh, let's have a search. Let's use these ones. I'll pop them with that. Okay, so yeah. I'm thinking might leave this area Actually, I'll probably add some yeah let's add some foliage there I feel like that's a, a nice spot to add some some foliage and then potentially some around here let me just make sure yeah random rotation still on that's fine um, and I'm going to add some of the common ones rather than the cattails I think that's not wrong. Um, I'm pretty sure they're called cattails. And then I'm going to add just a couple of these here just to kind of vary in height. Um, obviously I don't want to go too crazy with this um, because they need to be able to, to get around and stuff. Um, so again I like to just add these around the lily pad areas. Um, I think it adds quite a nice little to be quite honest it doesn't go a little bit too crazy and then I think just around the back of these areas I'm gonna add maybe a little bit of this just like that same again here just to just so it kind of pads out the back of these um, I was gonna add some yeah let's add some there actually give it a little bit of on it. Um, I think for the bracken I'm going to add just some little bits here and I could potentially add some sunken bits here I think um, and then also I think for bracken we're going to add quite a bit here to make sure that's not that it's sticking out a little bit so I just need to go and fix that and then we're just going to sink that down um, how much is it sticking out by? A uh, fair amount. But just like that, I think. And then I'm going to add a couple of these. So these are the common salt warts. So just in places like this, 
Um, I'm probably going to add some here, I think. But I just want to make sure it looks right before I select it and make sure it's in. Yep, I think that's quite nice. And then I think just on the edge here. And then I'm going to add just some little bits in here. And then here I think I might just leave that kind of open. What I could do here actually is I could make a very small little sand bed for them. Just like that. And then what I can do is I can just shrink that down. Just give that back bit, just a tiny, tiny little pepper in of long grass, just so we've, we don't lose that texture of the grass that we've put in. Um, and then same around this area. We can actually see if that was working on out to do a weird camera angle. Uh, just like that. And I think around the rocks as well, we are just going to add just that kind of texture. Just so it doesn't look too, too kind of barren. Um, so now I've just kind of filled these areas in. Um, I want to just make sure I've got all the all the areas that I need kind of covered, just so it doesn't look too harsh with that. And then I can come straight back in, and just push it back a little bit. So yeah, I think. What we've got so far, um, after these areas here, I'm going to save for enrichment. Um, obviously, we're going to have their bedding and stuff indoors. But I think this little kind of corner they've got here is pretty cool. Um, I was quite worried about having these barriers as well, but I'm not too worried about them, to be quite honest, because I think it just kind of adds a little bit of niceness, if that's the word. Nice texture to the, <laughs> to the enclosure. Um, always making up words that aren't actually words and then yeah the eelgrass so again that's just more for the edges of these bits um, I like using these just around the edges just to give stuff a little bit of texture because then it just kind of breaks it up a nice little bit as well and it kind of mimics this as well so in the places you don't really want to use a long grass you can kind of just come in with this and just kind of fill it out and it adds quite a nice little bit so I could do that pretty much all around in the kind of grassy areas um, which I'm quite enjoying actually so let's carry on and then yeah I just think in places like this I could add some longer bits up against the wall and then just kind of something like that I think Okay, so let's have a look at their enrichment. So just gonna, it's already filtered. So we're going to add a couple of little bits. Um, I don't particularly like the in-game enrichment items, but I guess some of them are pretty cool. So we're gonna have to add a couple of these in. I want to sync that, um, like that I think. And then that's nice and flush to the ground. Um, I don't know why it's saying it's inaccessible because it's in quite a. It's in the middle. Or is it accessible now? There we go, it's accessible. That's fine. I had a bit of a panic then, I was like, I don't know how it would not be able to get to that, but whatever. <laughs> um, I think for food and stuff, I might put their food inside only because I don't want could I pop the food there or maybe even here but then again can the keeper make it over there yeah the keeper can make it over there actually so we're actually going to add one of the food troughs I'll we'll have to work with that terrain a bit Let's move it out a tiny little bit until we can, until we're out of the, um, I mean we can probably add something there to be quite honest, um, let's just 
check the traversable area of the capybara and the staff area, accessible area, that's fine. Um, what I'm going to do is I am just going to fill it out with rocks underneath, I think. Just so it doesn't look too, too weird on the edge kind of thing. Um, might be a little bit awkward actually, we're probably best off using our own rocks that we did. But these ones I can just just kind of sink down and then I'm going to use one of these around there like that. And then let's just make sure that we can still access all these areas. And then change that to traversable area. And then yeah that's fine. So they can still get to their feeding bit. I think that's quite good to have it there. Um, obviously people will be able to stand and watch. So I think that is pretty much the basis of the capybara enclosure. Um, obviously I'm going to add a few little bits of enrichment because I imagine their enrichment is quite, quite low at the minute. So we just need a little bit more toy enrichment and they need a little bit of food enrichment. So we're going to add the watermelon. Um, we'll pop that in there, I think, just like that. So that adds a little bit of food enrichment. Um, the water won't be deep enough to use these, so we're not going to be able to use these. Um, we will use the barrel feeder. And then we just need to fill a little bit more with the toy enrichment. So I might use a couple of these water jets, actually. Um, we'll pop a couple like there. I hate how it turns the um, heat map on every time. So I don't like using the heat map. Uh, I like to just kind of place it like that. And yeah, I seem pretty, pretty happy to be quite honest. Well, uh, oh, people are already using the um, even area, although she can't really see much. <laughs> she's behind the fence. Oh, she's spying. Oh yeah. So they they're actually using the um, using the bathing animation at the minute. So this is what you do with the hot springs. So they'll actually sit like this. Oh, typically they'll get up as soon as I get there. <laughs> is there any others bathing? No. But you get the gist. Basically, they just kind of lie down and just chill in it. Um, obviously, they can interact with these as well. They do that thing where they sit underneath and the water just kind of pours over their head. Um, so yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with what we've got so far. I think the expansion to the wetlands area is coming on quite nicely, to be quite honest. Um, I think what I might do actually is I might ask you guys to actually pop what you want to see in the next episode in this area. Um, I was going to put the American alligator in here, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to kind of have like a little kind of aquatic centre with them in, potentially like here or something. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments, if that's a good idea to do that or not. Um, or if you've got any other suggestions for aquatic animals. Um, I know I did have a suggestion for the small clawed otters and I completely forgot that I already have them in here already. So we could potentially actually move them over and make them like a cool little area over there. So I think that could also be on the cards as well because these are living with the binturongs at the minute. So I could completely renovate this and just make it purely a binturong enclosure um, or we could have two separate families of otters. Um, we could even put like a tiny little otter pool here or something or have like a little otter centre where we've got like the giant otter and the Asian small clawed otter. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I'll have a think. Um, but yeah, I think it's either going to be like an alligator or some other kind of wetland animal. Um, potentially like the maned wolf or something, because whenever I've seen them, they've kind of got like that kind of wetland habitat vibe to them. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'll have a think and then um, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish up here. I'm going to finish off the building just going to put exactly the same kind of roof as what we've used in the area already. Um, I'm probably going to slope it upwards here 
um, and then we'll finish off with some pretty cool cinematics of the capybaras because I think they're pretty cool. So just give me two seconds and I'll get that sorted. Okay, so that is the capybara corner, which we're going to call it because it's on the corner. It is all sorted. So we've got all the hot springs in, the hot springs are working, they've been bathing. Um, I've added the enrichment, obviously we've got this half done because it's going to mirror over. Um, I just want to make sure this actually mirrors, I'm going to use that one because that one's a little bit weird. Um, just make sure, nope. There we go, the wanted angle snap on, just to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to have to use some, just some along the top I think, just so it doesn't look kind of weird. Um, but yeah, it's going to kind of mirror that all the way around. Um, it should all fit into place quite nicely. Um, and then yeah, on the opposite side it's going to be pretty much the same, but obviously I just need a suggestion for an animal there. Um, so yeah, I think they are quite content in here to be quite honest. Look at this little dude, he's just chilling. Oh, that one's munching away on literally devoured that whole <laughs> that whole thing. Uh, oh god, I thought that was on then. Where's the one? Oh, I've got one chilling on the little beach that I've made as well. Looking pretty chill as always, as he's capybara. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. Like I said, it's just a nice little fun area. Um, obviously, we'll go around towards the end, I think, and just add all the little bits and bobs. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of like a little overview as to where the area is going. Obviously when we started it, it was just the nature reserve, which we've now got bird hide. Um, and then we expanded into the red crowned crane and just some other native birds. Obviously the spoonbill can and can't be native, not the species. But we do have the species which visits the UK every now and then. Um, I know there was one quite close to me not too long ago, but I missed the chance to go see it. Um, and then we've got native swans as well. They're here, they can't escape because so I've got no escapes on. It's just a null barrier all the way around this. Um, but I think it looks quite natural as to something you'd kind of see where swans are. Just kind of chilling and swimming. Um, and then you go further up, and then you go up to the elevated bit to see the capybaras. And then, yeah, next episode, we're going to fill this in. So, yeah, if you have enjoyed this one, Drop a comment down below, uh, drop a like as well, subscribe so you can kind of keep up to date with these. Um, I will pop some little timestamp cards up at the top just so you can keep up to date with the series. Um, obviously we've done quite a bit so far, I'll give, if you are new here I'll give you a little bit of an overview. Ignore this area here, this is just my palette which I've been using. Um, so this is the wetlands area, so this is where it's going to kind of expand down there. Um, it's not going to be an overly massive area, it's going to have probably six or seven enclosures. Um, and then we've got the central farm area, so we've got like a gift shop, some barns, we've got an alpaca walking experience, um, we've got this little sheep walkthrough, uh, we've got the original pigs here with the pig styes that I've made, uh, we've got the cattle view cafe, this is a uh, sandbox item. Steam Workshop item, that's the word I'm looking for. And we've got a little chicken walkthrough. Um, I did convert this, extended it outwards and added the restaurant. Um, in here we've got the Highland Cow. We actually have a friend for him now. And then we have a little farmer's market here. Obviously, I don't think you'll find Gulpy Energy on a farmer's market, but it just kind of mimics it. Um, we've got the Cattle View Maze, which is Quite an easy maze, I guess. Um, we've got some more pigs down here. Um, I don't know, I was about to say, I don't know why I've not got a mud bath in there, but I couldn't actually fit one in because of the barrier restraints. We've got a barn in here with two, um, two resident barn owls, which is quite possibly my favorite species of owl. Um, I feel that's just there for show. I was gonna have a little ice cream stand in there, but I thought by the time I've it all out and made it <laughs> look pretty decent it's just you can't really see it so I just left it at that. Um, got the crop field 
Um, we've got the lima and goat walkthrough. So this is kind of inspired from Peak Wildlife Park in Staffordshire. Um, went there in the summertime and got some inspiration for this enclosure. Um, it looks quite fresh, so I probably need to go through and add some long grass and stuff just to make it look a little bit overgrown. Um, we've got the Shawalski's horse and the American donkey in here. We've got off show, well I say off show sheep, we've got more sheep which were filling that one over there. So I've just moved them into their own little field. Um, and then my personal favourite, we've got the Twycross Zoo almost recreation inspiration. Um, it's the Largibbon Islands. So all of these have no barriers. Um, the gibbons use these high ropes to get over to their own island. Obviously they don't swim. Um, it's exactly the same as Twycross Zoo, kind of like the setup and the side balconies and the inside bit. Um, let's just have a quick peek inside just in case you've not seen in here. Um, but you've kind of got like the view in for the indoor bit. Obviously you can see one down there running around. Um, you've got some tanks and stuff. So I don't want to go into too much detail because we're going to do a full tour towards the end of the series. Uh, Land of the Giant Tortoise. Uh, the Sandcats with the overpass. Um, we've got some toilets. That just leads around to this area here. Uh, oh, go over there because that's still in progress. And then we've got the deer forest here. So that's pretty much where we're up to now. Um, I did start over there but taking a little break from that side of the zoo coming over to this side. So yeah, I think once the, the wetlands area is done we're going to hop over to that area because I've got a pretty cool theme for that area as well. It's going to expand out quite nicely. Um, but yeah, at the minute we're working on the wetlands. I don't plan on moving away from the wetlands at the minute. I want to complete all of this with kind of like weekly episodes. I'm a little bit busy throughout October so I'm hoping we can stick with the, the weekly episode. In between obviously we've got Planet Coaster stuff as well. Um, obviously if you're not interested in Planet Coaster that's completely fine. Um, but yeah, I want to try and have a little bit of stuff for everyone. So yeah, I'll leave that one here. And like I say, if you did enjoy this one, drop a comment down below what you want to see next. Likes and subscribes are always appreciated. Guys, thank you. Bye-bye.